Hey, folks, it's Carrie Oberbrunner. I have with me a very special author, and people are seeing this title, and I'm telling you, they are jumping off social media saying, oh, my gosh, I love it. So, Jeff Russell, great to be with you today. Hey, it's great to be here, Carrie. Listen, this is a pretty edgy title, Fire Yourself First, and yet I love the way you tell the story of the opening and I know we don't want to give away all of it, but it's so powerful. Can you let people know a little bit about that intro story? Yeah, that was obviously a true story. And it was the trigger that actually pushed me to write the book. True. And uh, like I had the book in me probably like two years. Like I knew the steps. I knew the processes. But what I didn't really know was I didn't really have a why to trigger it. Uh, and uh, yes. and that story and that impact, I didn't realize how much I was actually helping people. And mm. it was really a disservice not to help them. And so what I found was so many people were stressed in their business, right? Yeah. They made it through COVID and they thought, oh, yeah, everything's great. But still, either they were super busy or they were just grinding it too much. Yeah. And they almost got a hopelessness. It's like, mm -hmm. wow, is this all there is? And that hopelessness can manifest itself into depression and other illnesses. And that's really where my passion is, right? The book mm -hmm. was really written to help people who kind of hit that stage where they're just like, I give up. Yeah. And I'm like, no, do not give up. There's hope. Here's a simple process. And when I tell people the four steps, they're like, that's it. It's like, yeah, yeah that's it. Now you have to do them. That's right. <laughs> well, and that that early story, because I've hinted at it, you've just told part of it, but it's really somebody who was going to take time off and create margin and create a great life. But then they never showed up because of was it was it suicide? Yeah, in the end, that that's what happened, right? It in this case, it was an emergency room physician who was just burnt out. And I think we can all understand how much the healthcare system um, really uh, it had to bend a long time, like through the pandemic. And yeah. so there's obviously a lot of stress, and not that they necessarily want to leave it, but they want to kind of have a balance, right? They want to have a life and the business balance together. Mm. And so that's really why he was coming to learn, you know, kind of how to expand and diversify his medical practice. But, you know, three days before the event, you know, he signed up, he paid um didn't show up and it was like wow. wow this is you know you don't think of it at the time but when we found out and we were following up hey why didn't you make it we we th were worried maybe at a car accident or something yeah. we never thought it would actually be the ultimate oh my gosh folks that's why we're doing this live stream today like literally it's not cliche this live stream could save someone's life who does feel burnout, overwhelmed, trapped. And I think that suicide or even just, anest I would say, call, I would say uh, anesthetizing the pain. And then Jeff, you've seen it all. You, you've seen people, you know, anesthetize the pain by distractions, addictions, but those are all outlets when people feel overwhelmed. I want to read your bio here because I think this gives people a great background. So you are, this is not your first book, but you are a best-selling author, your speaker, your business owner. You're the founder of Oak Ridge Financial Group and Investments and the uh, uh, International Association for Physicians in, um, how do I say that? Uh, in what medicine? Aesthetic. Aesthetic. That's right. And that, I mean, so give, give the lay person. So you're talking about Botox, what are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, all of the non-surgical stuff. When we talk about cosmetic medicine, that's generally surgical interventions. Aesthetic is the non-surgical. So the anti-aging treatments like Botox and laser treatments. And that's the what that was the program this one physician was attending, right? Yeah. Was that he was trying to expand that because so many people come to a family doctor or another practice and they, they want to have these procedures and they want to go to someone they trust. So it's a natural fit, right? The person who's been seeing you for 30 years. Makes sense. And that's yeah, one of 
you know, when it comes down to it's one of six businesses I have. And, uh, you know, and I love doing that business. I love speaking. I love talking. So I never want to give that up. And mm -hmm. that was actually one of the original triggers of why I wrote the book was that I was offered a lot of money for that business. And I sat back and I thought, you know, I don't want to sell this business. I actually enjoy this business, but I don't want to be 40, 60, 80 hours a week in this business. Yeah. And I'm like, so what could I do to kind of set this business up that I only do what I enjoy doing and nothing else? And mm. I also want to um, and I wanted to make a goal that was I thought really hard to get. And that goal was I wanted to work 10 days a month. And so I'm like, OK, let's that's a stretch goal for me. Right. Yeah. Because I would be working 10 days a week. Right. If I could. And so that hence the problem. Right. You need to kind of chill out and bring it down a bit. And yeah. so that's where I really thought, oh, but I've already done this in three other businesses. So I'm just going to do it to this, my main operating business. And once I did that, uh, all of a sudden it's like, wow, yeah, I've done this in a financial business and investing business, as well as a medical clinic I own, and as well as this training company. So the same process really opened up for, for so many different businesses and industries. Yeah. And so that, that was the trigger for sure. And you're disciplined. You, you do it. So folks, this isn't just theory. What I like about, about Jeff is like, even when we were planning our launch, for, for, for his amazing book, when we were talking about the marketing calls, he would say, these are my 10 days. We need to make them work. And what's interesting is when you approach life with that type of clarity, I think, Jeff, I, I think that the world bends in your favor, not, not in a, you know, egotistical way. But when you come to the table and say, I'm working 10 days a week, 10 days, 10 days a month, and it's got to work and it's got to happen. I think that the world suddenly starts listening and, and competing. But how did you find the secret? The key was you have to be very disciplined. Mm -hmm. And when you know you're just going to be this 10 days, you have to. It's almost like I don't know about you, but in in the past, when I'm going on my family vacation, right? I get so much done that last day. Ooh, I'm like fair. just grinding it, right? So I am getting everything done. I work like that all my 10 days a month, ah. right? So I'm efficient. I know distractions. I'm very regimented. These are the five things I need to get done. And I have them up on my task list. And I just work on those. I don't work on anything else. Yeah. You know, I, I lose the rabbit holes, yeah. Right. So uh, so good. getting that focus. And of course, if you don't have a team behind you, that's really well oiled, high top, you know, high type A performers, then it's going to make it much difficult. Like, I don't have to worry when I'm yeah. not there. If anything, the businesses do better without me. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's that's something so to it. <laughs> that's so good. Well, folks, check this out. Uh, this is a it's the best price in 30 days. I know you put it at 99 cents, Kindle, because you wanted as many people to get this today. So folks, today, even if you say, hey, I might read this book next week, get it today on Kindle right away. You can see I already purchased it, even though I'm a publisher, because I just think it's that good. I want to hand it to people. It's in hardcover. It's in paperback. It's coming out on audio. Let's talk about uh, a couple things here. Um, as I talk more about your serial entrepreneur, this is why I pay attention when Jeff Russell speaks. I read a lot of people. I hear a lot of people online who are theorists. They say, oh, yeah, here's my model. And, and I've never done it, but you should listen to me. Jeff actually does it. In fact, he teaches entrepreneurs how to unchain themselves. I love that imagery. Unchain themselves from the daily grind by creating a business that runs without them. You do talk about those four steps. We're gonna mention those in a moment, but it is the secret sauce. It's analyze, systematize, and scale. And then it really, uh, you got 20 years of experience in this field. So before we dive into the actual four steps, what do you hope this book does for people? I hoped it 
my real, my purpose really, and the goal is to just show them here's another way, an easy way. Mm -hmm. And you now have the choice. You have the choice to whether you want to sell and exit your business or you want to keep your business. And I use kind of a, I guess it's a flip it kind of example of an ATM, right? Uh, like where the ATM, if you have all the systems and processes of your business in place, it makes money whether you're there or not, mm. right? So um, it's a very interesting concept. So then as then it gives me the freedom whether I want to sell my business yes. or keep it. And I, and I think most people and most entrepreneurs and business owners, they actually want to keep their business, right? Mm -hmm. They like it. There's just parts of it they don't really like. And sometimes they work in it so much that they miss out on family events, miss out on the rest of life, right? And so then they're feeling, oh, hmm, you know, I'm missing out on something. And they feel that the only option for me is just to sell it and get totally out. But wow. that maybe deals with 20, 30 percent of their time. But the rest of the time, their mind is still working. Right. Their yeah. mind is still creating. Yes. And so they need that stimulation. So maybe selling the business isn't always the best solution for mental health of the seller. I know many yeah. business owners who have sold their business, got a lot of money. And then afterwards, they kind of went into a depression for a year yeah. or two. Right. Just because they didn't know what to do next. And so setting your business up so it runs without you gives you the time to figure out what's next. Ooh, right. Whether it's cool. charity, golfing, family time or starting another business. I like that. So I'm with you. I think one of the um, one of the saddest times, especially as I've been around older men, is when they retire they don't have the next thing. And you and I hang out with strategic coach, Dan Sullivan, but he always is talking about creating a bigger future. And if you do run out of future, you kind of run out of purpose. And your book is saying, don't just sell your company. And it actually, I want to take people to the table of contents because I, I think that this is just so good. Beauty of this, folks, is you go to click look inside on Amazon, you can see it. And it gives the outline. But you start with part one, unchain yourself from your business, why we need to fire ourselves first and learning the hard way. Give us, give us just uh, you know, a minute or two on, on this first part. Yeah, I wanted to set the book up for the why, right? Mm -hmm. You know, why would you do this? And so often, many, very few businesses actually sell. It's under 10%. Mm. So out of all the businesses, very few actually sell. We kind of hear about these ones. Oh, this person sold, this person sold. Most just close their doors. Mm. Right? Why? Because it's not sellable. It's not saleable. So if it's not saleable, that's kind of a challenge. How many business owner entrepreneurs are running their business so that they can sell it and get some, that's what all the hard work is. That's what the 80 hour days are, right? Just uh, yeah, yeah. it there, right? They're just because they're going to get something at the end, but they actually haven't set it up. And so the first thing I want them to do is think about, okay, what, where do you want to go? Do you want to sell this? Okay, fine. So what are the four things or three things you need to sell your business, right? Yeah. And one of them critical is that you cannot be integral part of the business. It has to be able to go without you. Because wow. most buyers don't want you. They're going to put their own team in place or amalgamate it into their organization. And so if they've got a business that is ready to run without them, then that's going to increase your valuation. Wow. And so you need to look at where you want to go. So if you want to sell, then this is a critical step for you. You've got to fire yourself first, earlier or later. Mm. On that point, I'll never forget when my investment person came to me and said, Carrie, do you want a lifestyle business or do you want a saleable business? And I thought, whoa, that's a good question. But I think where she was getting and taking me was exactly what you're talking about, that there's a lot of people out there that, that literally just want to create a business and it just supplies income for them. It's dependent on them. If they don't show up, they don't get paid. 
And you're saying that that actually can be a form of slavery. I mean, in a way, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. If you can't live, if you can't leave the business and it operates well or better without you, then you have a job. Oh, right? you're that, just ooh, tapping that's to be. Good. That's right? good. That's all you got. Ricky, you got to get that. That was good. Say it again. If you say it, was so good. Yeah, if you can't, uh, if you can't leave your business and it run as good or better without you, then you have a job. Mm, wow. Right? That's and I've worked right for, here. yeah, I've worked for Fortune 10 companies in my past, Fairmont Hotels, Xerox, right? So when I stopped, yeah, I got paid really well. But when I stopped working, the, that was it. It was a job, right? Wow. So how many people, they, they maybe you like your, uh, your boss better because it's you, but you still are required, you know, you're still, it's still tough, right? You still, if it's not sellable, then you're not, you're not an, you don't have an investment. That's what you want. So good. All right. Then we go into part two and we get into the four steps and folks, I'm telling you this, if you cannot invest 99 cents in your future, I don't know what's going on with you. Like this book is gold. It will save you pain. As he mentioned, right in the note to the reader, it could have saved somebody's life, but how many times do we look around on Facebook and see it? You just feel the people. They they they're burnt out. They're living, you know, uh, TGIF, all this stuff. Okay, so let's go to part two. What do you got here? First thing is you got to know your personal why. Why you're doing this? Not necessarily the business's why, but your why, because this is a critical part of you being motivated to make change. If you're mm -hmm. not really motivated or committed to making a change, you're not going to do it. And so this is where I want you to really look at the end. And what's the end game? When you're six feet under, right? Wow. So let's look at the end and now move ourselves backwards. So when I'm six feet under, do I want my family, my charities, um, you know, do I want a legacy or just do I not care? Right. So I have children. I, you know, hopefully by the time I'm six feet under, I'll have grandchildren and others. I would like to have a legacy for my family as well. It's very important for me to give back to charity as well. So I have my charitable organizations like my, one of my goals is to generate enough income where it's pushing off a million, two million dollars a year for charities. Right. Plus the family is. So if I want to do that. So that means. If I look at how much I'm making today, that may not get me there. But if I look at the value of my businesses and I look at what I could build it to or what it's at now and what it would sell at, it would actually get me exactly that number. So that big number wow. is achievable, but only if I sell my businesses. So what do I have to do to sell my businesses? They have to run without me. What right? if people don't have their why? What if they just jump to chip step two and they say, I'm going to hire my autonomous team? That's where you're saying those people, they're the ones who get bored. They don't know what's next. Is that is that right? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't start with your personal big why, you're not really motivated enough mm. to keep through. You can wow. start. Most people can start, no problem. They get excited. You got a brand new idea. I'm going to do this. I'm going to change the world. And then squirrel. Right. And, you know, where that, that squirrel comes in a week or three weeks or something else. Right. We've got to be very regimented and you've got to have that North Star that doesn't change. Wow. Right? And That's so, true. so important. And like when I created my own personal purpose, my purpose is to make a positive difference in people's lives by encouraging them to see what they cannot see by serving as their guide. And so everything I do is based on that. So my why is really all about helping people see a different way, a better way. Hence the book, hence what I do at the IPAM and what I do when I'm giving my time away as well. It's just mm. letting people see a better future. Awesome. Then you go to step two, you hire your autonomous team. I love that. By the way, these phrases to experience true independence your team must work independently of you. So good. 
what are we learning in, in that step? Okay, this is what I found in my 20 years in business. The most difficult part of running a business is the people, mm. whether it's your customers or your, uh, your employees. That's the most difficult part. So until I win the Powerball, this is wow. the plan. You've got to really know how to manage and hire the right people. I've hired some five-star people that were amazing. They go, they come to work, as Shannon Waller says, with the batteries fully charged. Yes. They're excited. They give 110%. And I've hired people in my businesses who give 50%. They mm -hmm. were just looking for a job, right? Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I need people to kind of take ownership, take um, of the roles that they do and the seriousness of their uh, position and do that. So this took me a long time. This was my biggest challenge. And I mm. probably finished it about three, four years ago. I have an 11 step hiring process. That process has pretty much eliminated the duds, the C players coming into any of my organizations. So it's very important. And you know what? This is so critical. I've given all of the steps, all of the questions I ask and why. Like even a simple question is, did you find the place okay when the person comes in for an interview? I'm looking to see, are you a glass half full or glass half empty, right? Do you complain about, oh, it's hard to park and the traffic was horrible? Ooh, of course it is. It bad. is every day, right? Like, yeah, or did you go... It's a beautiful sunny day. I got here early, went to Starbucks, got a coffee, and then got here. Like that's okay. You can't train attitude. Oh, right? all right, Rick, you get that. You can't train attitude. Oh my gosh, I'm getting tips here. So I love what you just said. You actually give them an open-ended question so that you find out what's inside. Hey, how was getting here today? Oh my gosh, that's so good. It's basic, but it's so good. Wow. Yeah, it's the little things. And I'll give you another example. We have three questions that I do in our hiring form. So that's that's getting into step one, step two. One of the questions is, please address the cover letter to Jeff Russell. And I'm going to give you a real life number. I recently hired an executive assistant a couple months ago. I received over 682 applicants. No way. Okay. If I took 30 seconds just to look at each of those, I would have wasted my full 10 days. And I'm like, I cannot do that. So I learned this many years ago. I asked that one simple question. So out of those 682 applicants, how many do you think sent a cover letter that said, attention, Jeff Russell? Based on the way you're saying this, I'm going to say... 25. Well, it was actually a bit more than that. It was 37, right? But, but 37. You if you wouldn't have told me that in this story, I would have been like half. Yeah. Yeah. So it made it really easy. I can manage, you know, 37 applicants and there was out of them, only two made it to the end. Right. Wow. So it saves me so much time because don't if you make a bad hire, not only did you just waste a lot of hours and days Money. hiring them. Now you have to start the process all over again. Right. And it just gets worse because now you have a hole to fill and it's just a nightmare. It's probably the biggest section of the book. And that there's tip, when bro, you that tip was amazing, Jeff. Like you're telling me 37 out of 60. I'm not good at percentages. 682, but, um, yeah. Or 682. I'm not good at 5%. percentages. But what, how much is that? It's about 5%. 5%. Folks, he just gave you a tip to literally get nine days of your life back when you apply, when you, when you post a position. Gold. Love it. So good. Okay. So now let's go to step three because people have to get the book to get all, <laughs> all the good gold. But all right, step three, dashboards and scoreboards. This is the other thing that's very important when you have a business. And I think many owners know you have to have a dashboard of all your KPIs, your key performance indicators, your key numbers. Could be net profit, number of widgets sold, number of deliveries, whatever those are. But you know what most businesses forget? They actually forget to give 
numbers and uh, goals to their team members. Ooh. So what we do is we create a scorecard for the team members. So depending on your role, there's no more than four to five items that you're responsible for. It's and okay. it's very clear. Only one person responsible for one number, not five people, because then we know nobody's responsible for it. So it's important that your employees know what winning looks like, right? Not that uh-huh. you have a job, just show up. No, winning looks like we've hit this number, this number, and that number. That's what winning looks like. That's what the expectations are. And you can be fun with it. You could create like a basketball scorecard in your business or a scoreboard, right? And put it up on a, an, a camera or a big screen TV or something like yeah. that. I, I do. It's the analogy of a basketball game. You go to a basketball game and the scoreboard breaks. I'm good for two, three minutes. Then I have no idea what the score is, right? Who's keeping track? And most employees go to work every day like that. They have no idea where they're at. Have the, Are they on their way? Are they halfway there? Where are they? What's expected of them? So just be clear. Show your employees what winning looks like with a scorecard. I, I knew you were smart, Jeff. We've been buddies for a while, hanging out in strategic coach together. But you're literally giving these quotable timeless truths. Um, do your employees know what winning looks like? Wow. I, you know, I think of Starbucks. You just said the word Starbucks. Does Starbucks employees know what winning looks like? You know, I'll say this. The other day I ordered some kind of food from somewhere. And they were so smart because the employee said, you know, awesome, great order. Would you like to add this or that to to your order? And I was like, even that little bit, that question, I thought that's improving the bottom line. And I could tell a difference between that person and just like, hey, thanks, you know? Yeah. All right. Let's go to number four here. And then we'll talk about what's next. Your autonomous exit. Yeah. And this I kind of touched on at the beginning because you almost need to have this at the beginning so that you know what your clear destination is because it's so impactful. This could cost you or make you millions of dollars. So Mm -hmm. this is actually the most critical part. But if you don't have a system and a business in place where the business runs without you, so the right people with yeah. knowing the right numbers that are most important for them, right? So you've got to have your business like that because now you know your numbers. So it's easy to create, this is the valuation of my business, yes, right? And a business valuator can come in. Now, if your business can run without you, your valuation will go up two to three times more. So wow. why wouldn't you do that, right? Because you know what the, the side effect or the challenges that you get to experience, you get to experience 20 days a month where you get to do whatever you want while you're building a business is actually going to be, be worth two to three times more than what it would be if you were a required part of it. So good. And so many sales, they want the owner as part of the sale to work there for six months, a year, two years, as far as like a buyout at the end. But if your business is already built to run without you, you don't have to take that deal, right? You can just exit cleanly and um, move on. If you want to, that's fine. You get the choice. What I want you to have is the freedom of choice. And if you've set your business to grind and grind and it has to be with you, you don't have the choice on how you're going to leave that business. Whether you maintain it, whether you give it to your family, right? And as your legacy, or you actually sell it or do a merger and acquisition, whatever you want to do. So you want to have your business run without you. Let me ask you this. Because literally hanging out with you, helping the book process, our team, you've, you've stretched our minds. Is it okay to work eight, uh, eight days a month, 10 days a month, 15 days a month, whatever the number is, can we still achieve what your book teaches and still have a role in the company? Absolutely. And often 
when we're at this stage, when we start a business, there's different stages of business. We like grinding it. We like working hard. You got to do that. That's just part of the deal, right? It's exciting. It's fun. It's not even like work for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But after you've been doing that for 5, 10, 20 years, now you move into more of the visionary role, uh, right? So uh, you want to be the strategic guy. So my role is I'm actually looking three years in advance. I'm looking at all the technologies. I'm looking at you know, chat GPT. Um, everything that's happening. So this is the challenge. If you grind it for full time, all time, you don't have the time to sit back, breathe and think about the future and wow. what that could be. You don't see tell it. you I'm just coming. Yeah. AI is going to be a big impact in every business in some way. You better at least kind of have an idea of how that's going to impact your business in two to three years. Right there, what other things are going to be out there? What other opportunities are there? When you take that time and you have that breathing time every single month, right? You can have the time to actually keep your business going and going and going. And you have an operations team in place that runs everything. So you just do what you enjoy doing. Do you see what you just said? Look at how Ricky captured that. I'm telling you, folks, you could go back on this interview and you could literally take what jeff said and for five i i i, ca I counted five or six that are just like mic drop i could think about that for a week but if you grind it full time all the time you won't have time to think about the future and i would say and you're putting your employees and yourself in massive danger Absolutely. It's all about risk assessment. And we don't think about that. And sometimes we think about it in our business, but we have to think about it in our life. We need to diversify. Just like you don't go and put all your investments in crypto or, or real estate, right? You diversify your investment portfolio. Um, same thing for you and your business, right? Diversify yeah. it. Folks, I know we're almost out of time. I do want to share his website. It is incredible i personally am following it on instagram go to the bottom definitely hit the socials you'll get a ton but you also have this fire yourself first you have fridays fire yourself first fridays what is it yeah so uh, there you go, right there. So if what I do is every Friday, there's a three to five minute email that gets sent. And it's just something to make you think, right? Kind of like the mic drops I did today. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm dropping, right? Every week, but That's just one great. at a time, right? right? Because I just take one, absorb it, think about it, apply it. And I just want to help you get on your journey. I want you to sleep better at night. I want you to feel like there's a huge hope and an opportunity for your exit. So when you hit the final exit, six feet under, you yeah. created a legacy you really wanted to do. Yeah. You got great endorsements. You have an incredible trailer. I've seen it. I've been sharing it. Um, today only, folks, I don't know how much I can stress this. Like, By the way, Amazon lets you get up to 15 and then you can also hit checkout and then go edit and add more but this is the type of book that you need to buy 10 15 copies we all have friends and you need to share it because i'll, I'll never forget your story in the beginning someone was crying for help by signing up for your workshop you know, that was not literally crying, but they that was a cry for help. And they did not make it to the workshop because they ended their life. They felt that much pain. I think you're in the life-saving business. Jeff, this has been amazing. I'll give you the last 60 seconds. What do you want to tell anyone today? And and let me just say, by the way, Jeff, your project manager is here. Ricky, your Amazon um, upload assistant is here. Our whole team, Sarah, our president, we've been blessed by seeing you launch. Thanks for trusting us. But what do you want to say to the crowd? Well, I do want, you know, it's all about hope. You know, no matter what situation you're in right now, whether things are going really well or you're struggling, you need to just 
sit down, breathe, take a nice deep breath, think about the future. Also think about where you've been 10 years ago. I love that little exercise that Dan Sullivan does when we think about the gap in the gain. We think about where you were 10 years ago to yeah. today. And you know what? I bet you you've done amazing things. So mm. you will do amazing things in your future as well. But you've got to have an end game. You've got to have an end goal. And you've got to have a process that you relentlessly follow. So pick three or four things and just kind of work on them a little bit at a time. My, I didn't go to 10 days overnight right? It started at 25 and then 20 and then 15, right? I want to get to five. That's next year, right? So you don't have to do go boom to 10. Hey, if you want to do it, try, go do it, right? Then you see what's working and not. You may kind of have to come back in the business, but then when you go back out, it'll run better. So it's all okay. a process. Enjoy it. Well, Sarah and I are going to chat about this even more because it's amazing, but awesome. Good job, folks. Go to fireyourselffirst.com. He's got a whole brand around this now. He's helping people in big ways. Jeff, it's, it's, I'm so glad we connected through Strategic Coach, and um, I'm just excited for your future. And I see your legacy only blowing up even more because of this book. Thank you so much, Kerry. It was a pleasure and an honor to work with your team. Um, it made the process so easy. And you guys, we probably would have done the book in half the time, but it was my 10 days a month requirements yeah. that kind of stretched it out. We don't so mind. it was, I just loved it. It was uh, awesome. So thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a better book now. Trust me. So it's, <laughs> it's great. All right, folks, take care. Get the get the ebook today. Buy a bunch of copies and uh, fire yourself first. We'll see you. Yes. Thank you all.